Hey there, Speak Clear folks. This is Jeffrey Davis at Speak Clear Communications. Um, today for my video blog, what I'm going to do is read a passage from David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Uh, this passage in particular is about a storm, a great storm at sea. So it has a lot of colorful language. If you'd like to follow along with me, just click the PDF file below and you can download a passage of the, uh, or you can download a, a copy of this passage. This is David Copperfield. There had been a wind all day, and it was rising then with an extraordinary great sound. In another hour it had much increased, and the sky was more overcast and blew hard. But as the night advanced, the clouds closing in and densely overspreading the whole sky, then very dark it came on to blow, harder and harder. Sweeping gusts of rain came up before this storm, like showers of steel, and at those times when there was any shelter of trees or lee walls to be got, we were fain to stop in a sheer impossibility of continuing the struggle. When the day broke, it blew harder and harder. I'd been in Yarmouth when the seamen said it blew great guns, but I had never known the like of this or anything approaching to it. As we struggled on nearer and nearer to the sea from which this mighty wind was blowing dead on shore, its force became more and more terrific. The tremendous sea itself, when I could find sufficient pause to look at it, in the agitation of the blinding wind, the flying stones and sand, and the awful noise, confounded me. As the high watery walls came rolling in, and at their highest, tumbled into surf, they looked as if the least would engulf the town. As the receding waves swept back with a hoarse roar, it seemed to scoop out deep caves in the beach, as if its purpose were to undermine the earth. When some white-headed billows thundered on and dashed themselves to pieces before they reached the land, every fragment of the late hole seemed possessed by the full might of its wrath, rushing to be gathered to the composition of another monster. Undulating hills were changed to valleys. Undulating valleys with a solitary storm bird sometimes skimming through them were lifted up to hills. Masses of water shivered and shook the beach with a booming sound. Every shape tumultuously rolled on as soon as made to change its shape and place and beat another shape and place away. The clouds flew fast and thick. I seemed to see a rending and upheaving of all nature. In the difficulty of hearing anything but wind and waves and in the crowd and the unspeakable confusion and my first breathless efforts to stand against the weather, I was so confused that I looked out to sea for the wreck and saw nothing but the foaming heads of the great waves. A half-dressed boatman, standing next to me, pointed with his bare arm, a tattooed arrow on it pointing in the same direction, to the left. Then, oh great heaven, I saw it close in upon us. One mast was broken short off six or eight feet from the deck and lay over the side entangled in a maze of sail and rigging. And all that ruin as the ship rolled and beat, which she did without a moment's pause and with a violence quite inconceivable, beat the side as if it would stave it in. Some efforts were even then being made to cut this portion of the wreck away, for as the ship, which was broadside on, turned toward us in her rolling, I plainly described her people at work with axes, especially one active figure with long curling hair, conspicuous among the rest. But a great cry, which was audible even among the wind and water, rose from the shore at this moment. The sea, sweeping over the rolling wreck, made a clean breach and carried men, spars, casks, planks, bulwarks, heaps of such toys, into the boiling surge. <sighs> Thank you very much. I love this.
I love this passage. I hope you do too. Thank you very much.